Hi, everyone. Uh, I want to thank you for tuning into this webcast of City Arts and Lectures, which would have been um, an IRL conversation um, at the Sydney Goldstein Theatre on April 20th, 2020. Um, and I am Jenny O'Dell. I'm an artist and writer, and I'm in Oakland right now. And I have the great, great pleasure of talking to Miranda July, artist, writer, filmmaker, many other things, um, and who is in L.A. Yeah, I'm in L.A. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> Hi. Um, and this is, yeah, a weird time and way to be talking, I guess. Um, but in a way, it seems almost like appropriate, given that so much of your work is about technologically mediated connections. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The struggle. Yeah. The struggle to connect. <laughs> yeah. And also kind of like wondering, I've I found myself like thinking about so many moments from either like your short stories or films, like as I'm looking out the window, like wondering about my neighbors and what they're doing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's that, um, that we're all pushed into this internal state um, so much more. And that is kind of the, the writing state, um, you know, like it's, uh, it, it's just that like, we're all in here sort of try, <laughs> trying to get out yeah 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 totally um I mean how like how are you doing right now <laughs> <laughs> um I'm okay uh it's sort of like it's like you're okay if you stay real in the moment and central and um you know I did my Sunday vacuuming and mopping <laughs> so it's like everything's okay <laughs> um, yeah. but there'll be these moments like last night um uh, me and my husband we were watching this um we've been watching the show Babylon Berlin um which is so hectic it's like Weimar Germany and I never have the slightest idea what's going on and it's so dramatic and um and I, I know a lot of people have had this feeling like when it ended, I had that, um, you know, coming out of a dream feeling. And, and I said, really, truly, that the whole world is in quarantine so we don't get sick is much stranger <laughs> than this show. Like it is really like you just have these moments where it hits you so hard. Um, and and I know we're not we're not articulate or brilliant about it yet because we can't be we're in it it would be like describing surgery while you're having surgery or something um, it's almost perverse to try you know it's not what you're supposed to be doing um, uh, so words should fail us and do um, uh, yeah, it's it's almost, but I will try. I will relentlessly try because that is my job. Um, it is almost, it's almost like you're falling, like we're all falling and we're trying to describe what falling feels like as we fall. Should I just yeah. keep going with more and more ones? But it's like, you're like, um, and then when you land, maybe, you know, then you'll, you'll be like, okay. And we don't even know how long we're falling for. We don't know what it's like when we land like do we die when we land do we transform you know? yeah it's yeah. such a strange experience of time yeah um and I so I was re-watching um your film the future the other night and so I saw it when it came out yeah. um and then watching it the other night I was so much more struck by the the parts where you know time stops yeah um and I was like that's kind of what it feels like right now where it's like I feel like my time has stopped but then you know like I look out the window and I see like delivery workers and like their time right. seems sort of like sped up or something and it's like right. yeah and then not knowing like how long this is going to be happening it's just really messes with your sense of time yeah yeah it's almost like it, it's also sort of frightening to learn how adaptable we are like I remember day one being like oh my god my kid's not going to be in school for maybe two weeks like, <laughs> <laughs> and like that seemed like what am I going to do I mean two weeks like I you know and, um and and you just adapt I mean now I'm like um 
now I actually almost have like a sort of Stockholm syndrome thing, uh, which I think I'm a real, I really head, head, if there's ever an opportunity for Stockholm syndrome, I always get it <laughs> where I start to get nervous about impending freedom, you know, and, and sympathize with right. the jailer, you know, so like, so to that, yeah. Yeah. Like a friend of mine was just asking like, Oh, do you want to go on a socially distanced walk? And this is like, you know, recently. And I was like, I, what? Yeah. Like seeing another person who's not my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it gets already get nervous. Yeah. 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 Um, well, so speaking of time, uh, and you know, yeah, just different experiences of time. Um, you're, you have a book that has just come out, um, a monograph, I guess it's, yeah. it's a monograph, yeah, um, of kind of so many of your art projects going all the way back. Yeah. And I, oh, there it is. And I unfortunately don't have the physical copy, which is sad because I can't stick my finger in the hole yeah. that's on the cover. <laughs> yeah, I'll show that. I don't usually do yeah. this, but it seems like I'm just at my desk, so it's less yeah. show-offy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was just like, for me, such a pleasure to get immersed in, you know, kind of like what you were saying about the TV show, like something else, you know, that's like so yeah. absorbing. Um, and so I was wondering if you could just talk about what the process was like of going back that far with your own work and maybe just describe your process of archiving. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have saved everything my whole life, a weird weird thing to do. Um, I mentioned this in the book that my dad did it um, for reason, you know, I don't, I, I don't know why, you know, he's a publisher and a writer. And I, I think that made sense. He was an adult, but I just, I, you know, so I saved all my, the very first letters that I received, you know, when I was like six or whatever, I started from then and just saved everything my whole life. Um, not in a hoardery way, I don't think. Um, <laughs> um, but it, and at a certain point, it was like, oh, wait, this is weird. I don't see any of the other teenagers doing this. Like, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't. This is like a bit self-important, you know, or something. Um, but I held on. Just It's one of those things, like, once you start collecting something, it's hard to stop because you have so many tiny elephants, you know, or whatever. Um, <laughs> and, and then... Um, yeah, and then with this book, um, it was actually, uh, Julia Bryan Wilson does a, an interview with me in the, in the beginning of it. And I remember calling her at one point and saying, um, do you think it would be weird if I put stuff from my archive in the book? Is that just too much me? And she was like, why have you been keeping an archive? Like... <laughs> this is it this is literally the moment right now and I I was like oh right I did it never occurred to me like a reason in fact that wasn't at all why I did the book or anything it was it was really like a I barely thought of that in time and there is a bunch of you know journal entries and set lists and directions to shows from the 90 you know things that I, I tried to sort of give a more material sense um of, of each era in part because the technology changed in a way that I feel like is his, historic, you know, um, is a notable thing about our lifetime. And, um, and I just imagined, you know, to me all, everything seems recent since it was my lifetime, but to my, to younger readers of this book, some of those things are gonna seem really like in quaintly old and then increasingly and forever, all of it will. Um, uh, if anyone is still reading this book then, but, um, yeah, it was a, it, it, I got very lost and it was, it was disorienting and somewhat uncomfortable. Um, and I just had to sort of keep repeating the mantra that if, if this was about someone else, some other woman artist who I admired, I would love to have it, you know, and to keep that because you I'm not you know I'm as self-involved as the next person but I'm not, I don't like to be self-conscious about my own process um I, you know in a, in a almost uh sort of superstitious way so it wasn't it felt very 
like, this is wrong, but I just got to do this for one, you know, intense summer, most of it. Um, and then I can go back to my actual creative brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's such an undertaking. Like there's so many little, I mean, I, um, you know, like I am not you. So I think I had the experience of the book that you are like trying to imagine, you know, like right. it being about someone else. And right. it's very much like, it's sort of the book that I wish I had seen, you know, especially like when I was just like really starting out, um, because it's, it has this, you know, you have like to-do lists and like right. notes and you can just see like how much work it is and how much, you know, like at the beginning you, you can't take things for granted. Like you're not well known. You really rely on people to help you out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I just really appreciated that about it. Um, oh, good. And I'm looking on my other screen, I'm looking at this page, um, which I just think is so amazing that it starts with uh, plays that you were putting on at the Gilman when you were in high school yeah or, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh which is just like who you know who had like I mean actually I save everything so I totally sympathize with the impulse okay, that you're describing. <laughs> but um yeah I was just wondering if you could talk about those that's just you know I went to the Gilman maybe twice when I was in high okay. school um and just like what it was like revisiting that and maybe just like what you remember about that experience yeah, yeah. I mean when I uh, I decided to put on this play. Um, I was not yet really punk, you know, I wasn't like, I knew about it. It was one of those places you drive Pat, you know, I, I grew up in Berkeley for those of you who don't know. And, um, and this is a all ages, kind of a seminal all ages punk club in Berkeley. So you drive by with your parents and be like, you know, <laughs> cause there'd be like all these kids with like crazy hair and, you know, when I was younger, it just seemed like scary, you know, like, are we, are we safe in the car from that place? You know, do we, and then as I got older, it was like, you know, just um, maybe, I don't know, maybe, you know, those are real kids, like, what are they like? And, um, and so I went, I had written, you know, dutifully written a, a play dutifully to some internal guide not to my school I guess um uh and um I went there they had these meetings um since it was like kind of a cooperative and I said you know I I want to put on a play here and um and my whole reasoning was just I can't do it anywhere where there's adults because I can't be told what to do I just need a space where they will let me have my own key and I go in and rehearse and then do the play. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, when you think about it, like that is such a miracle to give a teenager a key to a space, like, you know, totally raw, fucked up graffiti, doesn't smell very good. But like, I think just that was um, like struck me down deep, like that level of agency, like it's also, you have to be responsible. You got to lock it up. You got to not lose that. Key. You know, I mean, all the, mm -hmm. you know, when I think about how meaningful that is and I don't know, do, does that still happen? Um, but, uh, yeah. And it was, I, um, I had, I put an ad in the East Bay express, a casting call, um, for actors to audition. Um, <laughs> I don't think anyone auditioning because I, I had some an adult sit next to me and I think they thought I was the assistant. Um, and then I had to call the people who had auditioned and be like, you got the part and I'm 16, you know. <laughs> and luckily they weren't like so professional that um, that, that they balked. I mean, everyone went along with it and we, we did the play and um, and that was really, I, I started the book there just because it was, it, you know, I literally sat there and watched, you know, I wasn't in it. I didn't play myself. I cast um, this, this Cal student named Xochitl Perales, um, uh, who I tried to get be in the book, but, she, she, you know, people passed for whatever reasons, you know, they, not everyone wanted to be in it. Um, uh, but I remember sitting there watching her and, um, and thinking, okay, this, I'll do, this is what I'll do, you know, for my life, for the rest of my life. Like, this is going horribly, by the way. Like, this play is not, <laughs> not great, you know? Like, even I could see that, that, you know? Um, but, like, you know, I guess, yeah, once you sort of find your thing, like, and that was it. You know, I think much 
I think it's weird for a parent, right? Now that I am a parent, I can imagine like to decide at that point and not have a plan B, you know, is um, I now kind of get it why like summer jobs and things were insisted on, you know, alternate, like maybe go to college, you know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So when you were kind of starting out um, and maybe existing a little bit more as like an outsider to um, arts institutions um, or just kind of like established ways of doing things. Um, how was it that you were able to kind of like maintain uh, or kind of like, like follow the North star of what you were trying to do through all of that? Yeah. I, I think I liked the, the high stakes challenge of it. You know, it seemed, um, it seemed like appropriately impossible. And like, I was just the guy who could, thread this needle, you know, I, I had this like, um, you know, it, it propelled that, that it was hard or that I, um, could kind of feel that like I was sort of hard to see or something, or, you know, it's like when you can feel when there's not a category because there's no one else around and people have a funny look on their face and I don't know. Um, uh, and, um, I guess that's what, what propelled me at that time, you know, I, um, and I didn't, it's not that I wasn't sensitive, but I think I, I couldn't, I couldn't only take, um, praise as my fuel, you know, because there wasn't enough of it and it wasn't consistent or what, you know, or, or some sort of mirroring or something like it had to be, um, it really did have to like be inside, you know, had to be a feeling. So it's, so it's good training because you, in truth, that's what you always have, you know, is, um, uh, this kind of navigation and, and even when there is praise, it's, it's disorienting in a different way. Um, so I guess, I guess that sense of, of, um, of just ex excitement, like I was genuinely excited about the things I was making, um, uh, and the, the fact that, that, that someone would see them, that, that I was going to have the audacity to actually do this in front of an audience, not just think of it, but in front of it, it didn't really matter what that audience was or, or how they received it. It was just like, it just got me excited to think I would be, you know, come Friday night, I'm going to do this, you know, and then, then my heart would be pounding and I, um, and I, rehearse and rehearse and rewrite and yeah yeah um and I I think that there's something really nice about that like like on the one hand being really determined but on the other hand being so like open to like unexpected influences or circumstances like there's a really great part in the book where um like I think you like came you were in a thrift store and you came across some kind of like ear testing device yeah. that like set you on this whole path toward like audience participation I know. Um, which, uh, I know. Yeah. I think what was, what was I know, that it's thing? so funny cause I'm, I'm not usually in my office when I do that. I'm like, I could almost just go get it. It's in the other room. I still have it. Um, it was, a, it was like a school, these little ear things that, um, so you could speak into a central thing that actually took, I still remember, I think like a, you could plug a mic into it, like a quarter inch patch it in, um, talk into it and it had these many different receivers you know and I think it was so you could test a bunch of kids at once um and you could say like potato and then <laughs> or whatever the test was <laughs> and then if they didn't hear it they wouldn't raise their hand or something like that but how I used it was I was backstage and I would um I would just read I would say, you know, an audience member would come up. This was in Love Diamond. So this was the first, although, you know, the very first time I used it may not have gotten this right in the book. Um, I, because I could speak to so many people at once, I remember that people came up from the audience. They're all standing in a row with their pieces. And the thing I said to them was to repeat after me was we are the first six human clones. Um, <laughs> Cause they're all speaking in unison. And then they talked about, what it felt like, how, whether or not they were really the same. And if, if they were really real. Um, 
and uh, you know, you can see how the inspiration, you know, it, it, it's um, so tied so tightly to the material. Um, but yeah, I just kept going and going. I mean, once you've perforated that audience performer thing, it's it's hard to go back because it, it becomes part of your voice. Like, oh, I don't just have to speak with this body. And of course, at the same time, I was trying to figure out how to direct movies. So this was a way to do that, like in real time, you know, in front of the audience and all the, the kind of clunkiness of that always appealed to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that just sounds terrifying to me. Like <laughs> what I was reading about, especially like New Society, which was that performance that you did that like really heavily involved audience participants like just the kind of I mean I think that's inherent to any any making art right is like the control versus like serendipity and chance and chaos Um, and I feel like some people are more comfortable on either side of the spectrum so just like for me reading about that performance I was like (laughs) yeah no and me as well I'm not like a immersive theater person per se like that like if I ask a question at a at a book reading, I'm like shake. Like to me, there's nothing more nerve wracking than being in the audience and having the audience look at you. You know, and um, so I I think I'm coming from the the space of that 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 nervousness is what we're working with too. It's not that that and that I I have to like for New Society. It, it was a real high wire act for me like it was um I didn't know what was going to happen each night and and keeping it um a a show keeping it going um I always was like exhausted and emotional afterwards but I think part of the desire was to to really literally all be in that together and not not to have some sense that I was manipulating or, or even as a director just casting people but that we're going to kind of live and die by what happens tonight you know as a society um that was the premise behind it yeah yeah were you I mean I, I guess I assume you were surprised like really surprised by things that happened oh yeah yeah sometimes um yeah sometimes I would be all, also just very moved, you know, it's, it's, it's weird to be in your own show and be like almost crying and and not even always for some obvious reason, like someone comes up and I, you know, I remember there was a part where I fall in love with someone um, on stage from the audience because we're, we're living in this society forever. So as you can imagine, one does, does. you know, (laughs) and, um, and, and we just walk towards each other very slowly um, to this romantic piano music that another audience member is playing. The whole thing was accompanied by always an audience member. Um, and sometimes that person, you know, you don't know who that's to me. And some, sometimes I would really just be acting. And sometimes as we looked at each other, walking towards each other, there really was this moment of like, ah, this is really happening. It's not ever going to happen again. And you're this like you, the thing that I wanted most, I didn't know how much it came across to the audience, but this sense of like a, a soul, like we were in the, a dream together or something. That's always the, I love that feeling. Yeah. It sounds like, um, I can't, I think it was in an earlier performance, but there's some really great audience member accounts in the book of people who have participated in these performances. And there's the one where like, there's a couple, like an actual couple that gets cast, like, as a couple right like in their performance yeah. and like their description of it is like it it like was real like the, the right, feelings right. that we were having well, but it was also were, scripted yeah they were they were divorcing in real life because of an affair she had in real life and that was the story so they go to this thing together I think just because they had bought tickets but they were now falling apart as a couple and then they were like, what the fuck, we'll just volunteer. And then, and then are having to reenact this thing, which includes like kissing for a really long time, which they haven't done in months, you know, yeah. and this acting out of the whole story, which just, um, you know, I guess it's like a common story, you know, it's, it's not, um, a, sadly, you know, like human 
it's, it's human life enough that I guess my odds weren't that low of, um, or high or whatever, uh, of that happening. But I remember when she wrote me thinking like, if I ever do a book, <laughs> this should be in it. Um, this, this woman's story. And, and I, um, as much as possible, I mean, that was one of the premises of the book too, was that it would be t the narrated by collaborators and friends and participants. And, um, that's, that's kind of what got me, kept me going was that it was, it was kind of like its own piece and not, you know, that I didn't have to talk about myself very much, you know, because it's, that's not, um, not to ruin this event, but it's, but it's, it's never, never my nice. <laughs> strong <laughs> suit. I, I always I feel, feel like, like the work is already a language and the one that I'm most articulate in and then talking about the work is like absolutely just clumsy and I always want to just fall down and die when I'm done with the interviews. <laughs> 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 I mean, honestly, it's such a relief to hear you say that because I feel the same way. Okay, <laughs> but I feel yeah. bad about it, you know, if yeah. I'm like asked about my work. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm trying not to. It's a new thing yeah. and I'm trying it out on you and you can do it too. Just to be like, whatever. It was never our job, right? I mean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, you're like, I literally said the thing I needed to say yeah. in yeah. this form. Right. And you, especially for you, I mean, it's like, I, I feel like there are, you know, so many moments in your work that are about like something that exceeds like language, like written language, like it's a dance or it's some kind of like movement right. or performance. And it's like, yeah, there's a reason this isn't like, yeah, if I could tell it another, it. If, it were, if there was a much yeah. easier way then I would have done that. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah, it, it had to be this. Hard. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, it's funny, I had this this experience of like, I was going through the book and I, my friend is actually one of the people who's interviewed about learning to love you more. Oh, wow. The kind of like web-based participatory um, art, I don't know what to call it, a collection yeah. of uh, art assignments. Um, and I guess uh, his name is Peter Max Lawrence. He did oh, yeah. like almost all of them. Oh God, that name, <laughs> yeah. like I, I mean, we, these people became kind of like art stars to us. Um, yeah, and I can totally remember you know, like, did Peter Max Lawrence do the assignment? You know, like when we, <laughs> we all would notice, you know, these names and it was really meaningful to us because of course, it, yeah, I mean, when something spans seven years, it's like you're, it, it, that people consistently kind of stay involved is uh, in, incredible. You know, there's, you don't meet these people, you don't, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, so I, I teach a class um, on internet art at Stanford and I always mention this project, but I think something that I didn't fully understand at the time was like the the time that you were doing that project, the internet was a very different place. And like, as you say in the book, like uploading was very kind of, you, you used uploading for like work documents, like not yeah. for art projects, you know? Um, and so like, I would just be curious to hear like more about like how that like the decision to like make it a website and like just getting that working at the time. Yeah. I mean, there was almost, almost like an irony to it, you know, like, like, um, like, yeah, we're going to use the internet for art though. Like get it, you're going to upload your upload, but you're going to upload like art. Like <laughs> I can't quite get it across. I did, um, in the book, um, I made sure it was mentioned that like, uh, then the, this I thought might help that I had bought, bought the URL of my name sort of around the same time to 2000 or whatever. Um, and that that was considered sort of go like a little uncool to have <laughs> really? taken it that far. Yeah. To buy wow. your own name. Um, and, and I think that was just my, um, I don't know. That's always sort of my attitude about new t technology is kind of, um, why not like own it? Like now, now is, if this is what now is, now is not inherently better or worse than any other time. Like it's just interest, most interesting because it's now, you know? So like, um, I think that's, that's why the internet 
Um, but plus it seems super handy. I mean, we were already doing, I, I had already done Joni for Jackie, which was not dissimilar, just all women filmmakers and all through the postal service with VHS tapes. So you could only imagine how efficient it seemed um, and like <laughs> handing out flyers and stuff. So I think um, like a lot of, I, I mean, it's not like we were totally alone in that, but I guess the participatory part, yeah, was maybe new for the internet. And um, yeah, and we all, I mean, we were a, a couple, we wrote a grant to uh, Creative Capital for this project, like a little project, then we broke up and, uh, and then we got the grant. Um, <laughs> so we had to do the project, even though we like, <laughs> weren't on speaking terms. So it always, that it was called Learning to Love You More um, after a, an Emma Hedich project um, always seemed sort of um, fateful because um, we did, you know, we're now really close friends, but I think that might not have happened if we hadn't been forced to work on a project for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and I, I'm glad that you brought up Joni for Jackie because I, I was thinking about those two together and how, you know, like the, the, the earlier one is like, yeah, as you say, it's very analog or, well, you know, it's VHS and mail, but you kind of, I mean, you basically created a social network yeah, before right. that was the term. I guess I was just thinking about how like our desire to, to be on social networks is, you know, on the one hand to connect to other people, but it's also to like be seen. Like right. it's a platform to be seen. And like, it seems like that's kind of what you were providing. And just some of the accounts of people who are, who are participated in it in the book are like, you know, like I, this basically, you know, gave me a, an opportunity to like make something and know that someone was going to see it. Right. Right. And it was such a humble goal. It wasn't the current mode of like, potentially everyone might see it. Like you might really become famous. Like it was, the difference between nobody seeing it and knowing that you had an audience of at least 10 other women um, who were on your shared chain letter tape, as I called them. Um, you know, although I did travel around the world screening them and, um, and people, people did see them. Um, but I guess that impulse, you know, I was one of those, like that first um, play that we talked about, that began as a pen pal correspondence with a man in prison. Right. So I was that kid who was often figuring out how to write people, um, you know, if there was an address on something, I'm like, I could just send a letter to that. Like, so I was already looking for what was more porous than you would think, or how would you get into a, a world that you weren't, that wasn't your own. Um, and, uh, and I guess that's, that's always existed. Right. Um, and then, yeah, and then the technology changes, and um, and and it, it's still an issue, though. It's funny how even with social media, because you keep still as a person recreating the barriers or the aloneness, and so you keep having to invent ways to break through it. Um, and in a way that you know the technology itself, you know, as you've written about beautifully, like itself stands in the way, you know? Um, and so I think it's a, it's a thing we do. Um, it's like a, uh, there must, you know, clearly we need a lot of layers and filters. Like our consciousness can't just be like completely shining outward. Like <laughs> we, would, we would have no struggle or, or reason to live this life. Um, and so, um, and it's not like social media just pierced it and now we're just kind of in ecstasy, like not at all. Um, uh, so yeah, it's interesting. We just keep, keep going with that same struggle. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking, um, about as I was going through your work, I was thinking about this piece by, um, Sherry Rabinowitz where it's called hole in space. I don't know if you've ever seen it. it. Um, I think it was from, it's quite early. It's definitely like pre, pre-internet, but it was uh, basically two screens that were, I think in LA and New York, um, where it was just showing the people on the other side. Right. And so it was just called Hole in Space and there's all these people kind of gathering and yeah. staring at the people on the other side and like, that's it. And there's this guy like in the documentation of it who's being interviewed and he's like, 
he just can't believe that the people he's seeing on the screen aren't actors. Right. Like they're not like he's like they're oh they're real people and he just like can't get his head around that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I was I I think it just was like I was reminded of it because I feel like there's this always like in your work there's like this stretching toward like the person who who like isn't in the movie. Like right, the right. person in the background or like the the everyday like peripheral person who like I, as a viewer you're like oh that's me. Right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right the extra that person yeah the person just walking by yeah yeah it's funny because that is true and and well put and and yet there's this other thing which is that I for some reason with my skill set I can't do it well through just going straight towards real life like I don't write auto fiction I don't I'm not a documentarian I can't you know because it's such an appealing medium and that fiction like that that in a way if I can find just the right way to to um not be literal uh then like my f feelings can really come out you know as long as it's not too real and it, it, it um and it's like getting just the right pitch you know like the pitch that might shatter that particular glass or something um and that I feel like that's I, I maybe because I'm writing right now I feel like that's so much the 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 job is um is how to become free and that it, it's not through real life exactly you know that it's that there that I do have to make it up um but that sometimes real life can um is the path there. I don't know. I'm getting too abstract because I'm living completely internally all the time right now. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it's, I, I feel like, especially in, you know, in your earlier performances, like you, you are like split into two people, right? Like in Love Diamond, there's that eye exam yeah. scene where it's like, you're both kind of the doctor and the patient. Um, and I think like there is something you know, it's not a, it's not documentary, but there's something very realistic about that. Like, right. about like, which we're like, as you're saying, like, we're all living right now, like one's relationship with oneself and how that is just, it's not something you can pin down. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I was thinking of, for some reason that was reminding me, I overheard my child earlier today, who's always talking to himself in his room and I just heard him say um it's nice to have you on the show <laughs> I was just like oh man what what <laughs> I mean, there's no one in there with him no. you're like what show <laughs> what show and I knew just what he meant yeah yeah and right, like right, he right. Said it in such a confident way yeah um yeah yeah. I wonder, yeah, I mean there's so there's a there's a a scene in the future that was totally different to me the second time that I watched it where like your character or the character that's played by you, Sophie, yeah. um, is like watching someone else's dance on YouTube after having done her own trying to record her own dance and then like realizes that she's being watched by someone outside the window. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, and it's like this I don't know. It's like, so that feels so real right now. Like, right, like you're right. like, you're, it's like the wanting to be watched, but also like fear of being watched and then seeing other people sort of exhibitions of themselves. And right. like, what is the, what is the sense of interiority yeah. that that person's experience? I don't know. It's just, yeah. Especially right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very hard to get it right. Um, yeah. It just feels terrible so much of the time and yet we're kind of comp like we can't stop yeah um um so I do I want to make sure that we talk about the your movie that's coming out oh, in yeah. June, yeah. Kajillionaire yeah. um and um I guess something because I had such a rewarding experience like going through this book and then re-watching your older films like what um I'm curious like what are the threads that that maybe you were thinking about for a long time that show up in the film and maybe like what's, what's like new that's that you're trying to approach in this project that isn't in previous ones. Um, wow. That assumes a lot more uh, self-control or like <laughs> that I get to decide things. Um, uh, I mean, in retrospect, 
I can see, um, I can, well, you know, when I was writing between the future, my last movie and, and this new one, Kajillionaire, I wrote a book called The First Bad Man, my first novel. Um, and I remember I, I got really into sort of twists and turns and revelations and reversals and quite plotty stuff in a way. Like I really sort of dug into all the, not all, but, you know, narrative, um, uh, just the joys of that kind of storytelling. And I remember when I was writing it thinking, you know what this would be good for is a movie. <laughs> like movies that have all those, have all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and I, so I did, I did feel like I had these new muscles. And when I was, it took a while to figure out the story, the territory. Um, but once I was writing, that was kind of a joy in, in a very, like I find you, I have to be having a good time to write, to, to really write over, you know, years. Um, and so sometimes like this movie has a, has a, a family of con artists in it. And um, some of the twists and turns of that, I, I almost think, you know, they're not, totally necessarily the soul of the movie. You know, the soul is something not so much about heists. Um, but I think maybe I couldn't have written about that thing directly. Um, and that the, the fun of, of these, of kind of threading the needle of, of could you, could I really make a movie with like a surprise ending or something like that, that, kept me going and kind of kept me going into territory that was more mysterious and very unresolved in me, like emotionally, you know, um, as a parent and a child, because it's very much about sort of the inherent betrayal in the parent-child relationship. Um, and I'm on both sides of that. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. That's an answer. Like this movie hasn't yeah. come out yet. So I'm yeah. not that like, just yeah. the fact that you saw it um, is like, I'm like, it's exciting for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. have, my, have it totally down yet. But um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I also want to make sure that I ask you about Instagram. Um, because uh, one of my friends who incidentally is very into performance and theater, um, when I told her I was interviewing you, she's like, the first thing she said was like, oh, you have to follow her on Instagram now. Um, and I am, you know, as you can probably tell, like from my writing, like I'm ambivalent about Instagram, like, you know, day by day, like feel very differently about it. Um, and I, I love your Instagram account because it's like, I, and I think this happens with a lot of technological like media, right? It's like, there's a difference between like using something the way it's supposed to be used or it's like sort of set up to be used. Right. And then there's like using it like really truly as a medium that can do something that other media can't do. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. You know? And so like, there's these like amazing things, you know, like you're, you're like, I don't know what to call it. Like this like romance saga um, with, um, Margaret I'm Qualley. Right now. Yeah. Margaret Qualley. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like yeah. that plays out on Instagram. Yeah. So I did. Right. So it, it was after I'd finished Kajillionaire, um, but before it had premiered and, and that movie, you know, was such a joy to make. Like I had this amazing cast and the budget was like twice as big as anything I'd had. And, and more than that, like these companies, Plan B and Annapurna that just were like, we love what you do, go do what you do, you know? Um, and, uh, but, it's just my nature that after that, I was like, so what, what's the thing that's the most opposite of what I just did? Like, what, how could you make something like, it seems like technologically we're at the point where you could make something almost in real time and almost share it in real time. Like not a lot. I mean, you could do something live, but, and um, I think I was, you know, I was going through, I was sort of in a depression and I just, um, I met Margaret Qualley at a, at a dinner party. She seemed kind of open, unusually open. Uh, by the time I 
she gave me her number. By the time I called her, she was in New York. And I had thought like, oh, we'll make a little video for Instagram. And, but the only thing we could do was FaceTime. Um, and then that kind of right away had a sort of lover. I don't know, FaceTiming makes, always makes me think like there's something charged about that. Um, and so we, I just did one, but even before we were done with it, like the second we stopped and I scripted it. Um, I scripted it although about halfway through, we ran out of the script and just kept going, um, which was very easy to do with her. And when we were done, I was like, you know, we could, we could do this all day. I mean, I could, wow. Like my mind was just reeling. I was like, I could give you prompts and you could film in real locations as you know, you could, and we could, you know, through Instagram, this could all be like a live story. Like I just, um, and, and, um, and I had thought, you know, cause the system is so clunky, the whole business, like all of Hollywood and filmmaking, but it's, and it's heartbreaking, like theaters going away and all that. But the way that it's going to change is, is so dramatic that the way things are being made will be changed. And this, um, I mean, Jaden Smith, um, was watching, I could tell he had commented, watching the saga with me and Margaret, and I just DM'd him. And he wrote, saying like, hey, would you wanna be in do this with me and Margaret? And he was like, best day of my life. Like I got it, you know, right back just instantly. But to show the sort of <laughs> scripted and non-scripted, I mean, I wrote four pages of dialogue for him, which he memorized, he was on tour. So amazing. Memorized, you, such a good job. you know, yeah. and then we did, you know, we did takes of it. You know, we, you know, I sat in the same office and we just did it until I was happy with it. And he improvised a little, you know, like I gave people that room, but, um, and, and then it's kind of similarly, I, um, <clears throat> I DM'd Sharon Van Etten, whose music I love, and was like, we're going to do this ritual, this Hazion ritual. Um, and I just sat, came over and just sat in her, next to her, and talked her through, like, making this song. I mean, I'm not, I'm, that's giving myself a lot of credit for what I did. I just sat there, and everyone's like, <laughs> she'd turn and look at me and say, this is really surreal. And then keep working on the music <laughs> because I literally just, you know, like the turnaround was like two days. Um, but all I'm saying is like, what the, the net effect of that is that it was real. It wasn't all an act because we were all really just meeting and um, like it was more of a ritual than a piece of, art even, or, or certainly like a consumable thing. I mean, it wasn't for sale. It, it was something that happened between us that, um, that to me feels like different from what a film, a film is an, another kind of magic. And, and so I'm interested in that, like, um, uh, because, and you know, then we ended up doing this actual ritual, this hazy on circle um, and a circle of pennies. This is the part in the interview where people are like, I am so lost. Or, <laughs> I love this part though. It's like, I love that people are, I like, I love seeing the comments of like, some people are like, what is going on? And then other people are like, they're just like, they're playing or like, they're like getting right. into it too. Right. So of course yeah. I'm also getting in real time, like people are being drawn in and having their opin opinions and some people are you know, very disturbed or like you know, she's much too young for you or what, you know, like, um, and the funny thing is Margaret and I, it was only after the Hazion circle that she, she called me and she's like, I don't, can we hang out? Like we've never talked <laughs> beyond this. And we now we're good friends. I mean, we've had, you know, you can count whatever, f four or five months of like really great friendship, but no friendship has ever begun that way. It's not even like acting with someone because we were creating it along the way. Anyways, um, yeah. yeah, which also, I mean, I think that's just powerful for different kinds of relationships or romances or something that you could create and like the whole premise of the thing was sort of like, what is, could you make an alternate sort of kind of relationship? Um, uh, yeah. So, 
much to explore there. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And, and then you also used Instagram very recently for the, your uh, COVID International Arts Festival. Is that the yeah. title of it? Yeah. 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 What was that like? Yeah. I mean, that was kind of um, sort of the opposite impulse. Like instead of like, what could I do this sort of really um, certain kind of energy? It was more like the Joni for Jackie feeling of like, everything's already out there. If I could just be the, the service, the, like the, um, the support that could be a good role. And I could, um, and, and so it would, you know, I just, in a very short 24 hour period, I, I did like a call for entries. I mean, I literally like had the idea of washing dishes, went and just typed up a little thing and put it on the phone. I remember checking back a few times and being like, well, that didn't work very well. There were like two entries for like the first four hours or something, you know, I was like, okay, well, not as popular as I thought I was, that's okay, you know? <laughs> and then <laughs> by the next, you know, 20, whatever, 20 hours, there were suddenly like hundreds and I was getting like, oh, wow, oh, wow, this is, I need to, um, I can't give you your bath tonight. As it turns out, I need to judge. <laughs> I kept saying, I am judging an arts festival. Like I need a little time um, to look at all this work. And I, and I, it was such a familiar and kind of comforting state to, to each new thing is like a gift. It, it, it really, I mean, that is kind of how I started with, with Joni for Jackie and, and, um, and so exciting. And when you, kind of um, open up something that is um, really like good. I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, they all were like sort of the spirit of all of them was so heartwarming and of the whole thing. But then, you know, with Journey for Jackie, it was never, I was never the judge of any work. So I, I kind of enjoyed getting to be like, well, in my professional opinion, these are the winners. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah, and I will do it again. I feel like, are we, if we hit, I remember thinking like once we're at the um, uh, half, halfway point kind of lost its meaning, didn't it? The halfway point is like, not, yeah, a, I don't even know what the halfway or, point yeah. is anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we're halfway through um, not being able to handle anymore. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I have to say like I watching the the awards ceremony which was in your attic or um, it it's like... like our garage our converted garage <laughs> yeah because I yeah. didn't want to wake anyone up and I was like talking yeah yeah um I feel like I had I mean I had that feeling that you're describing in the part of the book about Joni for Jackie which is like oh like it's a real it's a real person on the other side yeah. like this is what a real person is making right now and it it's funny because now it's like it because of social media, it feels like that's easy to access, but it still seems very elusive. Like that feeling of like an, uh, like an, a sort of obliquely approached, like candid, real situation. Yeah. I'm just remembering how I got the idea actually was that I, um, more than you might think, look at the work of my followers. Um, not because they're sending it to me, but like someone will comment on something or follow something and I'll, go through their whole feed. And I've actually come across stuff that has just blown my mind um, uh, from all over the world. Not that often, but often enough. And I, I remember thinking, how could I phrase this? Like some of my followers are super tough. Like there was no way to phrase it that didn't sound <laughs> sort of self-aggrandizing or I, don't, I couldn't phrase it right. So the contest was in a way, a whole mechanism to kind of like it could have just been a post on my part but I couldn't think of a way to phrase it so I I wanted to enact it so other people could sort of have the experience of that you know of yeah basically my fandom um and that it wasn't <laughs> um yeah that uh yeah that it was kind of just a, a true pleasure um for me yeah I mean I'm not surprised that that your followers like some of your followers make great work because I feel right, like right. like your you know your your work is also sort of encouraging other people to like take them I don't know take themselves seriously like to like 
you know, be like, I matter and I can make stuff. I don't know. Right. Like, I know. I feel like level. this whole thing came across right. I mean, of course. Yeah, I think it's not, that is not surprising whatsoever. I mean, we all follow people. We're all, you know, we're all artists. That wasn't the thing. I think it was more not knowing how to share that. Yeah. Um, oh, my, yeah. my fandom back of total strangers, you know, um, how to appropriately phrase that. Apparently I can't, this is a fine example of like, if I could have figured out how to say that, I wouldn't have had to have the whole festival <laughs> just as I am now managing to um, mangle it right now so that I'm like putting everybody down. Uh, well, <laughs> like I said, I'll want to die after this. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, actually, so the, I, I think we might have to go to um, audience questions soon, but I have a very weird question for you, which is, would you ever consider making a piece for Zoom? Oh, for Zoom. Oh, with Zoom. Like yeah. with like, like Zoom yeah. as a medium, oh, that, which right. we're on right now. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, yeah, did they, they did that for Saturday Night Live. That was the funniest one in a way. I mean, that's, that'll definitely be more than explored. So you'd have to come up with something really good. I mean, I, my mind is going, what, what, how would you do that originally? Because, um, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm distracting you from your novel yeah. by, put, yeah. by throwing this question at you. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, well, yeah, yeah, just. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're halfway there with your, background i'm so oh, right jealous. for anyone who's listening my background is a is a google street view of the Morcom rose garden in oakland oh okay it's that rose garden yeah. right yeah okay. not the berkeley rose garden right okay. probably have been too yeah <laughs> um okay so i i'm getting some questions over here audience questions um so the first one uh says that in your new book you say that you quote really became an artist through your friendship with Joe Fateman, what moment or project made you feel like an artist for the first time? Oh, with her? Um, yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing is like, of, of course that, that that's in a section about Snarla, which is the, the fanzine, the sort of literary feminist fanzine we did together, which was in a more formal sense, how we began as artists. Um, kind of concurrent with the with the lifers that first play that we talked about but you know really it was the presence that we made for each other like we I remember making really complicated over-the-top presents like birthday presents for for Joe for Johanna that um not good art, but like maybe were the first times that I had really tried to make something that could encompass like a really deep feeling, which was basically just like my love for her and our world. Um, and uh, I, I, I think for quite a while, actually making presents for friends was like running alongside, like w was very tied to art making. Um, uh, and, and that you would kind of push the boundary. I, that's a little bit written about some of, um, like my friend Lindsay talks about that I was often pushing what could be done and often for someone I was like a present for someone I was in love with. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, I guess that, I don't know quite how I'd answer that question, but the, the, yeah, the first art maybe wasn't art so much as like gifts. Yeah, which I would, yeah, yeah it's, still, it's like, I love that because it comes from a different place than like trying to fulfill like an assignment or, or like make something that is like legible to a certain, I don't know, yeah. idea of art. It's like, you're really just trying to like do justice. Yeah. Something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, the second question is, was, I, this isn't the future, was Papa named after the lake where Joe first met his wife? Well, Whoever asked that knows, well, oh, oh no, no. I mean, that was the crazy coincidence. Papa wasn't, oh, wow. I just made up the name Papa. And then when I, um, and Papa's the, the talking cat in the future. Um, and, and 
very significant um, kind of otherworldly character. And then I met in real life this old man, Joe, who had um, met, in telling me about his life, he had met his wife at Lake Papa. And I, I, I remember I was, I was trying to figure out whether I could kind of merge with reality and cast him in the movie as himself and the voice of the moon, um, the talking moon. And that somehow was, I don't know, um, that, that like sealed the deal, you know, that, that like Papa. Yeah. And, and I remember I was telling him about the movie and, and Papa, and he said, Oh, was he named after the lake? I was like, no, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah. Where, where time and <laughs> begins and ends. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Um, Okay, and then this one, this next question is, uh, to what extent were you premeditated about growth versus letting things emerge organically? Um, this is still the same question. Did you identify a target audience slash niche or develop a growth strategy or was growth more emergent slash experimental? Um, wait, what was the thing right before identify an audience? Is that... Um, to, like, to what extent were you premeditated about growth versus letting things emerge organically? Right, right. I mean, you know, for sure, I feel like I'm kind of flying best when things emerge organically. Although I'm going to take this moment to point out that I'm getting very hot right now because, um, well, I had this different outfit planned um, or just shirt that I was wearing for this Zoom thing, but then when I got here, I decided that it wasn't a good shirt. Well, to be honest, like the thing, it was too transparent. Like I really couldn't wear it. It wasn't an option <laughs> <laughs> um, in a kind of scary way. Like I was like, fuck, um, this is, you know, I'm not at home, I can't. But I have a rack of costumes here for a, a project I was working on um, before quarantine. They're not, my clothes really. Um, and so I put this on, which it seemed kind of preposterous when I first put it on, like, but what am I going to do? I can't wear it. Um, but then once I sat down, I was like, well, who, who, what does anyone know about me? Maybe this is what I wear. And so I've just been rolling with it and, and kind of into this idea. I mean, it's really not my. Oh, wow. People. I wasn't getting the full. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, the like, shoulder pads are, are really enormous. Um, but it's it's so hot, I can't even tell you. So this is just an example of, I mean, at the same time though, I was really so thrilled. I was like, God, I love, I just, this makes me so excited that I'm gonna wear this and this, and that it's so, like I would never think to wear it. And yet this opens up a whole world for me. And I know that's a small thing, but like that is the unit of currency in my whole life is the sort of, the shirt's too transparent, so you have to wear this thing, but then that opens you up into a world that you didn't know you could be in. In this case, the world of wearing jackets like this. Um, <laughs> but also, like, who might I be in a jacket like this? I don't know. Um, uh, and then, the but I don't wanna it's, make it seem like I'm just, you know, dreaming my way to the top, you know, like, I'm not, <laughs> it's not all just a beautiful accent, like, yeah, like I, I'm really interested in, um, you know, especially in the past, but still, I mean, God, this is a wild time to have to figure out how a movie comes out into the world, you know, like how, what is the best way for my movie to find an audience at this time? You know, I, I do have like professionals um, on that too, but it's, it's, I'm kind of like, oh, well, back into this again, like where you kind of might have to invent the way that this happens. Um, and that's, I've never been one of those artists who's like, I'll just be so interesting that they'll just come. Like I always thought building the infrastructure around yourself um, and figuring out how to invite people often through their own self interest, you know, um, which is fine. I think that's fine if people are drawn to you because of, something they're some not selfish reason but just they're in their own world why should they care so much about you that they want to leave their world so you have to kind of 
make it relevant to their world, like with Joni for Jackie or Learning to Love You More, or the Somebody app. Um, uh, so that is to say, like, um, it's been calculated or conscious or whatever because that's interesting and seems to be part of the work to me and um and because i'm not like too good for it or bored by it or you know i i think that um uh yeah it's it's like worth my time also um yeah yeah i mean and also art is a job which i mean something that really comes across in the book is like so many people describe you as like you know, like relentless or industrious or like, oh, you know, like working like really hard. And I think like maybe uh, it, there's this like notion of the artist as someone who dreams their way to the top, right? And right. it's just kind of, you know, but there's this other side of things that you have, you know, I have to switch over into this like, not business mode, but like a, right. you know. And I think, I mean, actually dreaming your way to the top sounds just lovely um, to me. <laughs> um, I think you have to be willing to exist in a sphere that at least it exists, you know, like I'm going to be a singer. I'm going to devote myself to that. And people know what a singer is, you know, <laughs> like, I think I, um, I guess that's what you forfeit if you're going to kind of invent your path more or be on a bunch of different ones is like, you can't expect people to j just get that and everything to kind of roll out. Um, and I, I really, you know, it's one is definitely not better. Like, my favorite singers are singers, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, well, I think those are all the questions we got. So, um, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think probably our time is up, but, um, thank you. Oh, those are okay. Yeah. So those are all the questions we have. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for this conversation. And it, it was almost like, you know, hard, to for me because like you have so many amazing projects in this book and I wish we could talk about all of them and oh. I really hope that people you know can have that experience for themselves with the book yeah. um especially in advance of watching the movie I think that would be amazing uh, yeah. yeah that's nice um, thank you and uh and I also just want to thank everyone for tuning in uh whether you're yeah. watching or listening um obviously everyone stay safe and stay connected um yeah. I also just want to say that I checked on IndieBound um I checked your book on Indie, IndieBound. So for folks who are interested in buying the book, I would very strongly encourage you uh, to buy it from your local bookstore, if at all possible, because we really need to support our local bookstores right now. For sure. And in closing, yeah. we really will get through this. We will. It might not be to the same thing as before, but it's like this plight is ours, like who we will become because of it. Um, that is our story, as it turns out. A little hard to adjust to, but um, I don't know. I, I'm i trying to say like my, like, uh, it, like I feel like we all so wanna be told that it's gonna be okay, you know, like that this is gonna turn out okay. And, um, and uh, I think, um, I don't actually really have the words for it, but I, I so deeply want to like um, comfort because I feel like that's what I'm looking for all the time these days. So, yeah. And I think, I mean, we all find comfort in art, especially. Yeah. So yeah. it's really important right now. Yeah. 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 Anyways, thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks, Miranda. Bye. Bye.